Hello everybody, 26th of August today, it's uh, 5 to 6 days from the hatching point of Ontereo Pernii and we have the first L2 stage caterpillars now that we will have a look at them right now and change the container, I will transfer the L2 two stage into a new box and leave the L1 in there until all of them have hatched to L2. So if you have a look here you can see down here this is an L2 of Ontario Perni. Now it's it from green it changed to uh, from black it changed to green uh, because if you have a look at the L at the L1 caterpillars you will see that this is a really drastic change of of color from this black from this black caterpillar to the green down here it's still waiting on the leaf probably finishing the enclosure process so we won't disturb them uh, too much. We do the same as we always do. I present them some wet paper on the bottom. It is just to make sure that they don't dry out here. And then of course here I have some uh, fresh oak leaves. They have been uh, watered here, like this. So I transfer now my L2 stage caterpillars into this new place and the L1. I wait for them. So here's uh, L2. And now let's see whether we find some more. They have eaten up quite a bit of this oak leaves here. Now let's see, here's another one. This is a little bit bigger, this has an L2 here. Where is she here? Yeah. A little bit bigger, but also still waiting, finishing the enclosure process. So we also transfer it. Then here we have on the same twig we have two. We have here here is a an L1, this black one, and here is the L two the green one so we have to separate them and put the L2 here and the L1s for them we have to prepare a new a new container why because you as you can see already there's a lot of uh, fresh pallets now this is the force of the L2 This is an L1 here, black one. So, I have to go carefully through the whole material. This is again, it is a typical form of the way they eat from the leaves here, the way they eat out the traces from the leaves. So now let's see whether we have here another caterpillar. No, nothing in here. So we can clean this. Then we put the paper. Uh, we make it a little wet and then we 
put into this cage the L1 stage uh, lorry. So we have one here. This we put in also because it can eat on that. One, two, three, four. Five, yeah. So we still have nine. That's the perfect number that we wanted to find here. There have no caterpillar dies. So far I have to pay attention because I have not so many. If I lose some more of them I will not have the good chance to find a female and a male together. But at the moment we are on the good side. And then I cover it again with this plastic just to keep the humidity high inside. And then I have some uh, interesting facts that I found here uh, about Anterea perni. First about um, the taxonomical situation. Um, it's written here very clearly in this paper from Richard S. Piegler. He's an expert not only in uh, Anterea perni but with a lot of most of the silk mosses from 2012. Evidence that Anterea pen is entirely of sericultural origin, so it's um, shown here that Anterea perni is an artificially cultivated uh, species that originated from Anterea raleigh. That's also the reason why you can cross Anterea perni and Anterea raleigh and have um, a fertile offspring. Normal hybridization, um, if you cross two species, uh, they cannot um, go on with the breeding process later in the F2 generation. But with crossing Perny and Raleigh, you can have a lot of offspring from the next generations too. So it's also written here that the critical thing is that we have to are critical to conserve populations and habitats of the wild progenitor as a genetic resource for this economically important silk moth. Then here is another paper from India, some interesting facts that they say they transfer the worms always in the morning and in the evening hours, never during the day. That's why I do it now in the morning. It just came up here and that they uh, clean the eggs of Anterea perni in uh, they disinfect them with 3% formalin for 10 minutes and then they clean it uh, with natural water. And also we can find uh, some information about the efficiency of Anterea perni. They write here a larva consumes about 75 to 80 grams of leaf during the entire larval development. It means that um, a, a pupa normally is between uh, 3.5 to 5.3 gram for a male and 7 to 9.3 gram for a female. So this would, would say that we have practically uh, for uh, 1 kilogram of pupa we need 10 kilogram of uh, fodder plant material. So it would mean we need 10 kilogram of oak leaves to produce one kilogram of uh, pupas of Anterea perni. But in another paper I found also that they wrote that a larva eats only 35 to 40 grams of uh, fodder plant. So it's not yet exactly sure how much is the efficiency and we will try to find out later. An interesting information for people in Europe is that uh, it's said that Anterea perni uh, is found found in the in the wild in the, on the island of Mallorca. This is in the Mediterranean Sea. It's a, a Spanish uh, island, 
and they say in this paper from 2013 that still populations can be uh, uh, wild Ontario panic can be found in this uh, north east northeastern uh, part of uh, of Mallorca here there's a range of mountains and yeah they say that they find it around here but in other papers they say there are no known uh, wild populations of Ontario penny but in this other paper here they say that they have been observed since a lot of time but if you go through the list then of the source of this uh, um, observations mostly they are only uh, personal communications and um, you don't find any uh, original material to go back and see what it really is Ontario penny but a very interesting uh, silk moss and I hope that we can go on um, with the breeding process with this nice uh, little larvae that they are now but I think they will be bigger because think about a pupa that is around 9.5 grams for a female that's possible that's four times bigger than a normal Bombix mori or a Zomia moss pupa. Thanks for watching.